Hello and welcome back to Fusion Fundamentals with me, MJ. In today's video, we're going to be tackling some motion links, doing a couple of joints and seeing how we can get them to interact. Uh, if you're enjoying my videos, have a look down in the description. There's a coupon for a Udemy course I created. So that coupon gives you the course for only $10. I think the normal price is about $50. Um, just launched it, so I'm quite excited about it. But check out that coupon, go to Udemy. There's a lot of content in there that's not on my channel. So go check it out. Let's get into today's video. We've got this little platform. I've got two gears on there, two little normal spur gears and this lever. And there's a pin going through the lever there to hold it in place. This isn't really a functional design. This is just something to work with so we can look at the interactions of the joints and how to add basic joints. So let's uh, let's start with the first one. What we're going to do is we're going to use these gears and we're going to show you how we can get them to both turn on the, the stand or the base and then how we can get them to interact with one another. I'm going to start off over here by assemble. You can either click assemble and then joint or just click on the shortcut key for joint. Uh, before I start, um, you can see the base has gone see-through. That's because I've pinned it. Um, if I go over here to the base and I right click and unpin it, so that means that everything is able to move. If you select specifically one piece to be pinned, so I right click there and say pin, that means it's going to pin it to the ground. So automatically when I select a joint, that's going to see through. The first component will be the whichever component we click and then wherever we click on it. So like for this one, I will select the center over there. As I clicked it, you see that one's going to see through and it's now wanting us to select a point on the base. I'm going to select that same point and we're going to see we've now got some rotation. Change the motion. It's currently a rigid type joint. We'll change it to a revolute joint. That means we can uh, turn it. You get other joints, so like a slider. It can slide up and down on that axis. Um, cylindrical joint. And then pin slot. None of these we're going to be using. Today we'll do a revolute and a slider. So let's change this to revolute. I can see I'm getting my rotation there. I don't want any limit to this joint. I want it to be able to move freely. And we've got the preview motion over there. So I'll click that preview motion. We can see that our joint is moving nicely. So I'm quite happy with all of this. So I'm going to click OK. So now I can click on it and I can turn it freely. And it's going through its motion. You can notice over there that it's going straight through the other component. That's because we haven't enabled the contacts. Once we've added this joint, I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to repeat this step. Joint. Our base has gone see-through. Reselecting this point over here. And then you'll click again in the same place to get the revolute joint for our gold gear. And it's automatically chosen a revolute. So I'll just confirm it there and okay so now we've got this gear that can also turn like that but what i want i want to be able to turn the blue gear using the gold gear and vice versa so if i click on assemble over here we've got enable all contact this means that now where these gears come into contact over here as it hits it it's going to enable the next one's motion. So now these are linked. They're not really linked, they're interacting because we've enabled the contacts to act on that component and it'll do its turn there. So there we've got two spur gears that are intermeshing, one driving the other. There's the blue one and here's this one. So this is this is useful if you're wanting to simulate something where there's a series of gears and you want to do a sort of a motion study to see how its movements are affecting other components. 
So that's, we enabled all contacts and we can see how these two revolution joints interact using the component. Next one we're gonna look at is the pin over here. So I'm gonna select the joint and I'm gonna select this point over here. This is our little slot. And again, we want it right over here, which is the center. It's currently got a revolute on it. I'm gonna change this from a revolute to a slider. You can see it's moving in and out. But I wanna set some minimums there, a minimum and a maximum, and the rest will be zero. So minimum is zero, maximum, let's make that 40. And then let's look at our limits. Zero is all the way in, and the rest is all the way in. So it stops at zero. Click OK. Now if I select this joint, I can drag, I should be able to drag it out. If I just get it, there we go. So notice that no matter how far I pull it, once it's hit the limit, it'll stop there. There my mouse is just moving away without it. Push it back in. Again, it's only going to the point that I specified as the limit and the rest. So that's our slider joint. So we can have, uh, you can have a pin in a slot or something like a scotch yoke, which um, is quite a cool little mechanism. You can go check it out. Uh, but that's a handy joint for that type of mechanism. So here we'd be able to see how the pin slides in and out of the slot over there. Next one and last one, we're going to be doing a revolute joint on this with a limit on how far it can move. So I'm going to select the joint again and we're going to be selecting this item here just to make sure I'm going to turn off our pin so I can select the center of that lever arm. I'm just going to get a view from this side so I'll make sure I'm selecting the right point. Again, dead in the center there. And now remember, it's it's kept our slider joint. We don't want a slider joint on this. We want a revolute joint. So I'll go to motion, change it to revolute. Now you'll see it does a full 360 degree rotation. Um, let's activate our maximum and minimum. Rest will be zero. Change to front view. And then minimum, let's make that say 45 degrees and maximum will go minus 45. So this is our limit. Uh, let's change the rest back to zero. And this one to 45, there we go. So now it's moving through that range, which is 90 degrees, 45, 45. And there we go. So let's turn our pin back on and have a look. So if I grab this, click on it, I can move it. And again, it will stop at the limit that I've set. So let's just go through our joints again. We've got our Revolute with limit on. We've got the pin slider. So that's sliding in and out also with limits. And then we've got our Revolute on our gears. So that's it for our motion links or joints tutorial. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And don't forget about the $10 coupon for the complete beginner's guide to Fusion 360 in the description. Until next time, bye.